Hi, it's vegan nutritionist Paul from Hench Herbivore and this is my review of a Tim Sheaf full day of eating raw vegan. If you want to find out where it all went wrong, stay tuned. So we're going to follow one of Tim's typical full day of eating videos from when he was raw vegan. We're going to plug all the foods into the chronometer app as we go along and by the end of the day we'll see if he has any holes in his nutrition. But we start our day it's not fruit and it's not salad. It's home brew. Oh God. Cup of home brew tea. This is gonna be what I think, isn't it? There's really not much taste of it at all. Ew. You've got some on your chin. Tim keeps saying that he drinks his own wee because he's recycling his amino acids because it's hard for a vegan to get protein. Well, I've never drunk my own wee wee and I seem to be doing okay. But then again, you know, I eat food. I get so many people ask me to do videos on urine therapy. Um, and I'm sure I will at some point at the right time. But realistically, you can do your own research on it. And if you're ready for it, you're ready for it. Most people can't handle that. No, Tim. Most people just don't want to drink their wastewater. My good friend, fellow YouTuber Leo Venus, has just graduated medical school. Let's see what the medical profession has to say about any benefits regarding drinking urine. As medical professionals, we cannot give advice to our patients based on what we think might be right, based on gut feeling or anything like that. It has to be evidence-based. We have to make sure that our patients are getting the best possible treatment according to the best evidence available today. This is why you'll never see a serious doctor recommending something like urine therapy or telling someone to follow a carnivore diet or anything as silly or unscientific as that. That seems straightforward enough. I'm gonna head to the gym shortly, so I'm just packing my bag. I got my bag, got about a litre of water. That's distilled with nothing added to it for now. And then I'm gonna make my water for the gym, my special gym water, it's a little different. All right people, so now it's 10 a.m. Still only been on the water and the magic water. Now I'm gonna make some more kind of magic water. This is uh, so distilled water glass jar, this is my, my gym water basically. So start off with got distilled water, mega hydrate. Now these are mega hydrate pills. Now I thought you were against taking pills, not natural, too complex, too sharp or some old nonsense. Which are uh, super alkalizing. I'm Dr. Patrick Flanagan. <laughs> He looks like a trustworthy medical professional. Don't tell me ghosts tell him all the latest in nutrition science. So looking on the website, I could see no ingredients listed for this supplement except silica hydride. Did a little search on PubMed. There's no science on the human ingestion of this product. Um, they use it for all kinds of other crazy but no one's been mad enough to eat it. Again, looking on their website, despite there being no actual science behind it, they're claiming that this product can up your hydration by a massive 2.7%. Wow. You can also buy this other supplement on their website, Crystal Energy, containing Flanagan micro clusters that apparently give you wetter water. The secret of longevity. If that's not enough to convince you of the validity of this doctor, they've also got Palladian Andromedan technology. That's right, alien, alien, technology. alien, technology. alien, 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 alien. technology. You can buy an Andromedan holographic projector, a snip at a mere two to six point three thousand dollars. Don't know what to buy for the person who has it all? How about some pyramid headgear? If you put the flat side down, it makes it harder for people to push your arm down, but if you put the point down, then it makes you very weak. I'm gonna get one for the gym. Suspicious? Don't worry, there's thousands of customer testimonials. So I take the little unscrew the lid. So you get the mega hydrate in there. Then now I add liquid gold. Monoatomic gold allows subconsciously held beliefs and worries to surface and become understood. Oh, I get it, spiritual mumbo jumbo. Again, I searched PubMed, nothing about human ingestion or safety. Powerful stuff if you know about monatomics. Powerful money spinner if you know about gullible people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One for each chakra. Seems legit. Taking to the gym with me, all I'm going to take is a 
a watermelon, which is all I plan on eating. But just in case, because if your body's hungry, you've got to eat, otherwise you stop making bad choices. So I'm going to take a smoothie with me. This is five bananas and distilled water. Nothing but that. So just in case I get extra hungry, I can have that. Then Tim did a 5K run, followed by a big gym workout. So lots of calories burned. Now, I'm going to break the fast with this beautiful, beautiful melon, which I am very excited to have. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm gonna eat both halves right here. Very colorful, delightful, juicy, hydrating. I'm gonna guess that there's likely two kilos of watermelon flesh there. Whether you realize it or not, there's a universe inside you. There's a whole world inside you. And the beauty of it is, is when we're plugged into this world and the external world, we can numb it and we can turn it off the feeling of it. But when you tap into it and you start to associate and connect with it, you start to realize how malnourished it is or mistreated from generally the things we've done in today's society from the food the cooked foods we're eating there's no science to suggest there's anything wrong with cooked whole plant foods i'm not saying it's intrinsically unhealthful to eat raw vegan what i am saying is that most of the benefits purported by raw food advocates are mere bro science there's no real science to back it up there's drinking the smoking um, the meat and dairy and well, we can agree on one thing all the all these different things the toxic air and the, all the links deodorant sprays and aftershaves and perfumes all this stuff is going inside and, and is toxic yes meat contains hormones antibiotics neu5gc trimethylamine hemine heterocyclic amines sat fat trans fats cholesterol industrial pollutants pesticides and heavy metals that bioaccumulate up the food chain uh, the smoothie that i made earlier Bananas and water, nothing else. Don't need fancy powders all the time. Bananas are more than enough. We'll see. I'm gonna have a couple of these bananas in some traffic. If you're hungry and you're eating one food and you're still hungry, you just keep eating it till you're not hungry. Or maybe that one food does not supply all the nutrients you need, so your brain sends a signal to tell you you're still hungry. You know, in the same way that obese people can pile down junk food and seem to be insatiable. This is the fifth one. Okay, so that's 10 bananas so far today. What we got, there's like zucchini noodles. Ooh. I made a, a basil, uh, pesto sauce, just pine nuts, avocado. Yeah, and then there's some zucchini noodles and some lettuce. So, so we can't see the quantities there. I'm gonna guess it, three courgettes, 400 grams of lettuce and avocado and 60 grams of pine nuts. Of course, it could be more or less than that, but it was a fairly small tub. So I'm guessing it's about right. I'll divide by two as Benj is getting in on the action. Next, the awesome Brett Cobley, AKA Epi Vegan, made Tim some raw stuffed peppers. Again, I had to guess at some quantities, but watching closely, I'm confident I have it fairly spot on, perhaps a touch over if anything. If you wanna follow along and see what you think, I'll put Brett's original video in the description box. But from my perspective, for two of these peppers, I reckon Tim ate two red peppers, 10 cherry tomatoes, a third of an avocado, 50 grams of cashews, one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, a third of a teaspoon of miso, one tablespoon apple cider vinegar, a third of a yellow pepper, 25 grams of mango pulp, 25 grams of cucumber, and 50 grams of bulgur wheat. That smells so good. Mm. No, we, all got, we all got that mustache. Uh, yeah. <laughs> an in the top. There you go. Cheers, boys. Yeah, cheers, cheers bro. Yeah, bro. Finishing off with a bowl of some kind of vegan ice cream and a protein bar. Not the healthiest raw vegan foods. When you're under eating day long, you will be tempted into these hypercaloric junk foods. That particular bar contains cocoa butter, which is one of the few vegan fat sources to raise your risk for coronary heart disease. We can't see the brand of ice cream they're using, but should it be a coconut based one, it too will have the long chain triglycerides associated with an elevated serum LDL level. Either way, it will be full of refined sugar and fat. Not good. Again, as Tim didn't give all the quantities for all the foods eaten, I've had to do a bit of a guesstimate. I think I'm fairly much there though. I'll be surprised if it's very far out. And I have his calories at around 3,000. Net carbs was 489 grams with 77 grams of fiber. Fat, 83 grams. The essential fatty acid omega-3, 
a woeful 1.3 grams. The RDA for a male is 3.2. This will make you extremely ill over the long term. Omega-6 is a little lower than the government RDA. However, I don't see this as a bad thing. This is just an arbitrary number that they've made up by looking at a sick population. Sat fat, possibly as high as a whopping 21 grams. This is extremely high, especially for you know a so-called raw vegan. I may have it a bit wrong if that was not a coconut-based ice cream. You know, it might have been a Swiss glacé or something, which I think is like soya-based. You know, you can drop about seven grams of satrix off there, but still kind of fairly high. Most people eating this diet are trying to prevent heart disease. I don't like to see satrix this high. Protein, 72.6 grams, probably okay for him. He's a smaller athlete. That bar had about 13 grams, I think. Um, again, I would have stuck just to the whole foods, so, you know, some legumes or something. B vitamins are all well covered. The one thing I will say, B12, he's getting the minimum RDA there. However, that was because he ate some fortified nutritional yeast. In his video, he says that he's not eating anything cheesy since he's been uh, raw vegan. So he's not been eating nutritional yeast. He's not taking a supplement. So he's gonna be B12 deficient. That is huge. That's the one thing vegans pretty much the world over know not to avoid. Plenty of carotenoids there, particularly lycopene, which you would have got from that big watermelon. So no problem producing enough vitamin A from that lot. Plenty of vitamin C, but his vitamin E is low. If he'd have added in some sweet potato or some butternut squash, or even some more mango, he maybe would have hit his minimum RDA. These vitamins, you know, they're not to be missed. They are essential if we want to feel well. You know, this is no joke, people. You need to make sure you're getting your nutrients in. Particularly if you're a YouTuber and you're, you know, influencing people and how they eat. It's a bit naughty. Vitamin D is non-existent. He did not take a supplement. It was not a sunny day. If you're vitamin D deficient, you know, there's going to be depression. You're going to have low libido. Vitamin D lowers your sex hormone binding globulin to give you more free testosterone. So that's like your um, virility. It's your kind of aggression in the gym, ability to get strong. No wonder he failed. On to minerals. Calcium was not half where it should be. You know, that's your sports performance, it's bone health, it's an electrolyte, so if that's low, you're not gonna be feeling great, are you? Selenium, a little low, would have benefited from a Brazil nut or something. Sodium was very low, again, sodium is an electrolyte, it's very important in sports performance, particularly he's like kind of super hydrating himself. Tons of water, bit of wee wee. Um, that supplement, if that does anything, which I really doubt. Um, and the watermelon, you know, the watermelon's a, a 90, percent water or more. So if your sodium is low and your calcium is low, you know, your muscles are not going to contract properly. You're not going to have great workouts. And lastly, iodine. Iodine is so important for well-being. It, you know, we need it to make thyroid hormones. Thyroid is kind of a thermometer that manages like most of the systems of the body. So, you know, a couple of sheets of nori, half a teaspoon of dulse or arame. It's very easy to get your iodine in if you bother. So there it is, folks. If you want to mess your health up, just follow any old YouTuber, you know, with no background in nutritional science, just experimenting on themselves and just spouting a load of, you know, anecdote telling you how they think they feel and whatever. This is so important, guys. It's your, it's your life, it's your longevity, it's your functionality. Do yourselves a favor and follow someone like nutritionfacts.org. This is a team of research scientists. They look at every English language nutrition paper that comes out to see who funded it, was it good science, you know, so you know if there was the potential for bias, whether it's worth listening to, and they cite every study, you know, that they reference, so you can see for yourselves, you know, what you make of it. Anyway, I'll let Tim have the last word. The future's vegan, we know that. Watch this video now, or I'll make you drink a cup of Tim's special brew.